Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, I want to go over the 319 Lake of Calandra patch notes. And I took my time to actually go through this, this book of patch notes once again. Like this time around, they were really, really long. Okay, so there is shit tons of changes. So I try to like uh, keep it short and simple and easy to understand. Uh, some parts I just straight up skipped um, just because I think they're like... If you know that or not, like, who cares, to be honest, right? I just want to really give you, like, a quick rundown on the patch notes, what to wait uh, if you are too lazy to read through this entire thing. Uh, and, yeah, I think let's start right away with uh, the Calandra Challenge League, which is basically a construct of a custom set of encounters at the Lake of Calandra, which basically means once you're mapping, you're going to find these, like, little altars and you have, like, tiles and stuff that you can put together. I think uh, once we actually play the league, it's going to start very simple and going to get more in-depth the further we go. And I think it's just, for my personal opinion, wrong to, like, make conclusions on how this all going to work out and how difficult it's going to be and what is the best in slot. A tile program for it you know we're gonna find out so nothing to worry about in the uh, start basically so new content features we have new skills added galvanic field lightning conduit and alchemist mark which galvanic field and lightning conduit are two new lightning skills that are based on shock shock effect and stuff like that also new support gem with overcharge support which basically makes your your skill um reach or at least like deals damage like we talk about the damage threshold of shock, right? So it's not dealing more damage, but um, the shock is applied as dealing 500% more damage. So with this support gem, it should be relatively easy to hit some very, very nasty big shocks than, than, um, which that you can use for um, exploding the lightning conduit, for example, and so on. We have new and unique cards, uh, unique items, diff cards, ring base types, Atlas Memories is new core mechanic. I really, really like that when I saw that in the um, preview, the reveal, right? Where you like have like these overjuiced maps without alternating your Atlas based on the memory that you found. And if Nico says like, yo, I, I, back in the days, you know, when I was young, I was like going out. I, I got drunk. I got fucking wasted. When I woke up, this, I was on this like island and this was fil filled with like breach monsters and stuff, right? So I think that's going to be quite amazing. And I really like this take. Then we have foil versions of Pinnacle Unique items. Usually you get those from um, the Reliquary Keys, but it seems like they just probably have a minor chance to drop from the bosses. Maybe there was no statement on that, but it would be weird to run a T1 map and then just find, uh, I don't know, like any Pinnacle boss unique, because usually those uniques are based on the bosses and you cannot get them um, elsewhere, right? Like a Watcher's Eye is go always going to be like Elder, Uber Elder, Uber Uber Elder and stuff, you know? You cannot drop a... Watch his eye from Hillock. I guess at least. Wait, let me fix that real quick. Uh, webcam. There is some some tiny little bug there that I just a little bit over flipping off my hand a little bit, but it's fine. So content. Uh, then we have uh, the trial master is back. So all so his uniques. I think it's gonna be like a unique map that you can open uh, with like this trial master. And you have the reflective oil to anoint mirrored items. There's a typo. Perfect. Fixed. Hey, why is it's not annoyed? I, I, I don't know. So leak content rework arch nemesis. So um, the core is that they don't want to like overpack this rare monsters. I think that's going to have a negative impact on headhunter. How tremendous that's going to be. I have no idea. We're going to find out. Reducing the spawn rate of rare monsters encountering rare packs with four or with up to four arch nemesis modifiers. I'm actually wondering. I think there was an Atlas passive skill tree or skill note um, that gives like plus one modifier to rare monsters i'm wondering if this can go up to five or it's like one two three um and then with the keystone up to four i don't know we're gonna find out because like five modded arch nemesis monsters might actually be quite um interesting but therefore you make uh, they make them more challenging but also more rewarding it should really be like i think the way that ggg wants to implement this is that they want to have like small boss encounters within the map you see one of those uh kitaba touch innocence whatever monsters and you're like oh shit you know and and you really wanted to fight this pack for like 15 20 seconds like dodge the abilities like an actual boss fight but therefore they're gonna drop like immense piles of loot that's how i see it then we have a leak content rework of beyond which basically means 
all the beyond monsters, the beyond bosses are gone and are replaced by Scourge monsters. I really like this take. I really like the Scourge bosses and everything. And it also means that now we can get Tainted Currency to drop. So Tainted Fusings are back on the menu. And with the Exalt Divine change, you know, that they are making, I think Fusings are going to be dirt cheap and everybody will have access to easy six links, which also is a nice thing to have, especially early on in the league. Then we have the leak content rework harvest, removing crafting options with uh, within the harvest, so no more uh, like picking one of each side where he says like, okay, you can still do that, I, I think, but it's not like you have this is gonna have more fire modifiers, this is gonna have more fist modifiers. All the crafting within the harvest is removed, okay? But when you kill the monsters, um, they are dropping life force, and life force should be tradable objects, so you could either. Um, like farm the, the life force yourself or farm them like heist like rope markers and just sell them to players and if you are like yo i don't care about harvest but i want to do crafting you know go pee trade buy like ten thousand life force and and off you go right because as far as i see um your crafting bench or the horde crafting station will have preset crafting options and you need this life force to pay for the craft right um, some crafts get removed, others are adjusted. I think the divination card gamble is a rip just because um, since there is no hard... I, I'm not sure if there is a hoardy crafting station within the harvest because as we know, divination cards or you cannot drop items in your hideout. So I don't know, um, either they fix it that they, the, the outcome of this gamble is basically in your inventory or they straight up removed it, I have no idea. Then there also has been changes since there has been harvest crafted, adjusted your stuff like infused beachheads have now a chance to drop from the unique boss. So you kill the red um, unique boss um, and you have a chance to get the infused beachhead. The dedication, the gift and the tribute of the goddess have now a chance to drop at the um, rework chest at the end of the uber lap. And uh, they also adjusted atlas passive tree notes, sextant all regarding to harvest. Then the exalted and divine orb change. So they have actually the same rarity, but Exalted Orbs are way more valuable than a Divine Orb. And the problem is that Divine Orbs is something like I'm literally using probably five to 10,000 Divine Orbs every single week because I like perfection. Sometimes I'm spending 15 or 20 hundred um, Divine Orbs to hit this perfect roll. And this is like going to be impossible to do. Um, and because they also changed like the Exalt Orb um, that you needed for bench crafting, you know, like can have multiple crafted modifiers, suffix cannot be changed, prefix cannot be changed. All of these got changed from Exalt Orbs to be Divine Orbs because Chris still thinks that people are actually X slamming their items. There are people that are doing that. I do that sometimes as well, just to YOLO it, but it's not really an effective way of crafting. It's, you know, it's it, very, very few people do that. And the people that are doing that, they usually have hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of Exalt. So they're like, yeah, let's, let's slam some away and, and maybe we hit something RNG based, right? And the vending recipe of a six link that give you an, a divine orb is now removed and this gives you 20 fusing orbs instead. So I'm, I'm seeing like probably for like one X or now for one divine, you probably get like a thousand fusings with fusings now being mass found and with, um, I say the changes, um, shit, I, I forgot. Uh, yeah, the tainted currency. So tainted fusings, corrupted six links, as well as like giving you, um, Twenty fusing orbs. I think fusings are going to be dirt cheap in this case. Then rebalance of unique items. Reduce the number of unique items drop. Make them decent um, instead of hidden by loot filter. Massive power spikes for alt characters while leveling. So there is like over a hundred unique items in a list. So you, if you want to, you can check this out. Right. The um, the the actual path. Uh, the official patch notes are um, listed in the description below. And basically, they reworked so many items and they are now really, really powerful. I'm not saying that they are so powerful that every endgame build will have like all um, straight up uniques, but some of them are really, really strong, even for endgame builds. And the majority of them are just very, very powerful. And they got like some of them got the level requirement reduced. So you're going to have like some alt characters that are going to be ridiculously strong. I think like the Doom Fletch bow or something has like 400. DPS or something right now and it's based on level 28 or, or even lower right so if you find this bow you easily gonna like have no problems going into the yellow, yellow or high tier maps until you actually replace that bow and that happened to a, a lot of other um, uniques for example the, the Rimsoro gloves that you used to have like 50% fizz um, fizz to cold conversion now has a hundred percent so if you play cold bv or anything like that any conversion build um, you're gonna have like super easy access and um, to get all your damage converted then slap on a hatred a herald of ice and you should be fine 
then faded unique items um, they started to merge Faded Munich. Since the Prophecy League was removed, I think like a league or two leagues ago, right? There is still like the Aetherius Mirror and the Aetherius Reflection, right? The Faded Upgrade version. So what they do is like take the base item and the Faded item, mix them together, make like a decent item, you know, and get, just get rid of all this like Faded stuff and Prophecy and all the kind of things. So overall, every single Unique that has a Faded version is usually a lot stronger than it used to be. Then Defense Balance Manifesto. Spell Suppression um, has their values reduced by items, but therefore have increased um, Spell Suppression granted by passive skills and other sources. The Arctic Armor has now increased damage reduction while stationary, so that counts for both physical and fire damage, like less fire damage taken. The Flesh and Stone has increased damage reduction against enemies that aren't nearby because, you know, Flesh and Stone, if you're in Sand Stands, nearby enemies are like blinded and stuff, you know, but if they're out of the range, you're actually taking less damage um, from the incoming uh, like projectiles or whatever, right? So that's going to be increased. Um, the Defiance Banner got nerfed in the amount of armor and evasion, um, which I think is super good just because Defiance Banner is just so freaking strong. And for a 10% mana reservation, uh, our rights, like, bro, it's it's way too strong. If you have Determination, Grace, and Defiance Banner, dude, you're set, you know? Like, it's brutal. So then they changed the Wind Dancer. Um, they removed the 40% more evasion rating if you have been hit recently uh, by an attack recently. And now it says 10% more chance evade. And evade is, like, the good thing, right? Because if you have low evasion rating, right, I mean... Yeah, I mean, if you have decent evasion rating, 40% more is sick, right? But the 10% chance to evade is actually, I don't know how much evasion you actually have to get to actually get this 10%, right? It's, it's pretty good, actually. Um, then we have the arrow dancing, which um, removed the 40% chance to evade projectile and 20% less chance to evade melee attacks. Um, but therefore, it has now evasion rating is doubled against the projectile attacks. And you have 25% less evasion rating against melee attacks. So it's easier accessible and understandable how this actually works then the ward is getting buffed so um this is like the, the new base type they added in i think it was expedition league or something right you have like armor evasion energy shield and ward as the fourth one but ward is like there are some builds that are like abusing this with the flask and stuff but um they want to have like an easy access to it so now their ward restoration time got buffed so it's now four seconds instead of five and you have like new suffixes for a faster restoration so if you can get ward restoration down to like a second or so then it's like way more powerful um than like energy uh, shield recharge or something right so i think it's going to be pretty nice if you like build around that then the grasping mail the 100 percent increased global defense is nerfed to 50 percent i don't know if this is having a big impact i mean grasping males are actually sick for that mod but in the end um i think they were like way overpriced or at least like way it had like a, such a high value last league because of recombinators. People wanted to have this grasping mail to get this 100% and recombinate it on a uh, Val Regalia or something, right? And since recombinators are gone, I don't think this is going to have like a tremendous impact on the gameplay. There are still people having grasping mails, but this stat is just way too powerful, man. I remember my build, I slapped on just 100% global defense and I get like 3,000 energy shield. It's, it's crazy good. Um, then developed mods, max life as ES is gone and therefore um, they replace it with the physical damage taking as fire or lightning damage, which is also pretty nice because, you know, a lot of builds like, I think there is a lot of builds with like Aegis Aurora and like massive uh, amounts of uh, armor stacking these days with determination, grace and stuff like that, right? Um, but if you are not able to get those values, in, if you throw in a couple of physical damage taking as fire damage for example you don't have to worry too much about your armor you just try to get like a high amount of fire or lightning damage uh, resistance to actually counter um the incoming physical damage and i really like the builds i i played a couple of builds that had already like 80 percent physical damage taking and you know physical damage if you get hit it doesn't really hurt you at all just because you have so much uh, elemental mitigation then blind has higher values now. Mind over matter got buffed and nerfed at the same time. I think this is kind of a weird take. So GGG stated that they want to like buff mind over matter, arc mage, mana stacking, and so on. The problem why these builds are usually bad these days. First of all, arc mage got like destroyed uh, a couple leagues ago, and uh, with all the buffs of the auras, with the mana reservation efficiency, and auras are so insanely strong that you actually want to have ma many auras. And with Mind Over Matter, um, you can basically not really do that. But um, so that's why they buffed the Mind Over Matter to be 40%.
but then in the same hand they remove the body armor mod you know like cloak of defiance doesn't have a 10 percent mom anymore there is like an elevated i think it was a shapers mod to give you like 15 percent there was an eldritch implicit to give you another 10 percent mom effect and stuff like that all of that is gone so if you if you like compare it in this case Mind of Matter is now actually worse, the way of building it, because all these, like, modifiers that damage taken uh, from mana before life also got changed or removed, or the value is lowered while, uh, like, focused and stuff, you know? It's 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 a bit weird take on that, but I'm not going to spoil or anything. So, defense, fortification is now easier to gain and longer lasting. We have the minion balance. This is something I skipped entirely, okay? There is, like, a list of changes to minions, minion life, minion resistance, whatever, you know? Um, but they also added um, items that give you minion stuff. Now, like shields, they made an, extra, an actual minion uh, shield. But the problem for me here is I personally have no clue about minion builds. I, I just don't play them, so... I, I cannot really tell you anything about like, yo, okay, minions have now 10% more life. I'm like, okay, they are probably more resistant now or more durable, right? Well, other people say, oh shit, they have 10% more life and then the corpses will have like detonate that way more damage and whatnot. I just, you know, if you're a minion player, I think there is a lot of like content creators that are minion focused uh, and they are definitely going to have a better impression of what this all means. Then we have skill and support gem. Balance, Corpse Explosion skills, the nerf the life of Auric Champion and Auric Colossus, which probably had like way too much life. And if you if you watch like Hardcore Solo Cell Phone races, there is so many people uh, going with like Detonate Dead, Ignite and stuff because they are so fucking much damage. And they basically want to counter it because it, uh, GG stated that this was not really intended. Like the Ignites were like way too high. Then we have Fire Trap, reverted damage buff. So they basically got just a, a damage buff. Then the trap cooldown and duration, trim the availability of trap cooldown and duration and compensate the damage of cooldown trap skills that are underperforming. So there is some buffs to um, like, yeah, underperforming um, traps here. Seismic trap pretty much has 30% less damage on all gem levels. Then we have the explosive arrow is split the hit and the element damage bonus for stacking arrows on the target into two stats, reduce the element damage and slightly increase the hit damage. So it's a little bit of a nerf to the uh, explosive arrow, ignite builds, ballista, whatever. But I don't think it's going to be uh, such a nerf that you say, like, yo, build is dead. No, it's definitely not. Then actually, cast on death got nerfed. They have a reduced damage and the, um, the what is it, the alternate quality and stuff. It doesn't have give you, like, 100% crit chance or base crit chance. It's now down to 10%. Um... I, I would say, I, I think I watched a video of, like, a guy that had, like, a 20 billion, uh, Cast and Death Discharge build that just, like, did, like, a thousand uber bosses in a matter of, like, two days. I think we should blame him for that, but, yeah, um, yeah. Um, then we have the, um, Blessing skills can no longer be supported by Life Tap, and now they have increased our effect by Divine and Eternal Blessing. The Sniper's Mark does, uh, does not give you life in Mono Flask charges generation from Sniper's Mark. I think this is basically because they added the Alchemist's Mark, which basically does exactly that. Then we have Hydrosphere. Only allows Hydrosphere to be hit by the entity um, that casts it. Um, I don't really understand 100% how this works, but I talked to a couple people and they say this mainly affects minions like carrion golems or, and I don't know, like if there's 10 minions hitting the orb, um, they all have their separate instance of this one second internal cooldown and stuff. But for projectile based builds, there's like no changes, like one um, hit per second that you can have. Then they um, changed uh, some underperforming skills. If one of your favorite skills is in there, then you should heat up to the patch notes and see what actually changed. We have buffs to artiller, uh, Artillery Ballista, Blazing Salver, Cleave, Decoy Totem, Devouring Totem, Energy Blade, Firestorm, Haste, the Aura, Reef, Rejuvenation Totem, Scourging Ray, Scourge Arrows, Shock Nova, Soul Rain, Spell Slinger, Sunder, Valflame Blast, Aero Nova Support, Awakened Aero Nova Support, Urgent Order Support, and the Critical Strike Affliction Support. Then we have Val Clarity, a little bit of a change. Um, they increase the soul cost, but therefore slightly increase the duration, which basically um, gives you like no mana cost spent for your skills while Val Clarity is active. Then we have Awakened Hex Touch. Failing to apply a curse to a hexproof enemy will no longer remove the curses on the enemy. That's basically, in my opinion, like a bug fix more or less. Then the Trickster Ascendancy got buffed heavily. Um, so this is like the reword. The, people say it's like the new god tier Ascendancy. I personally looked at it, it has a lot of like cool things when it comes to like energy shield, restoration, more damage per master, it's a lot, a lot of cool things, but I personally um, don't see it as my new leaks, for example, right? 
Then we have the unbreakable um, is split into a narrow but more powerful skills. Then we have the Chieftain, the slams by the tower has chosen, now deal 100% more damage, which basically deals like twice the amount of damage as before. Then we have some changes to the Pathfinder, add more power to Master Alchemist, uh, partially compensated by removing extraneous power from the much stronger Nature's Boon, which was like the um, reduced elemental damage taken. Then we have the um, item ch and changes. The Omniscience got nerfed. By, I, I still don't know. Is this like a a 33% nerf? Is it a 50% nerf? No, wait, I think a 50%... No. Yeah, I think it's a 50% nerf, right? Because if, if you say you need twice as much Omniscience to get the same, it's a 100% nerf, right? So having 15 per Omniscience is like a 50% nerf, right? I still think that Omniscience will be fine because I think this is way too powerful of a unique. That's the reason why this thing goes for like 50, 60 exalts uh, in Trade League. And I think um, it's going to go down in price because people are like, oh shit, five more Omniscience for my Ulres and Pan, this is dead. This, this item is dead. No. It's definitely not that. I think that the omniscious builds were overperforming either way. So getting them tuned down a little bit is a good thing. Melding the Flash actually got a 4 to 6 minus to all max resistance. Trying to counter this like easy access um, of hitting 90% cold dress. I think nowadays Aegis Aurora with like purity of eyes and stuff. With the um, impossible escape was a good way of reaching like a, a high amount with some aura effect. But now getting another like 6% or 4% in a good roll, that actually hurts because you need to get this 4% because you kind of want to get to 90% max rest, right? So um, effective shock, the sources of maximum shock effect is now um, additive with each other. Um, the thing is like they want to change um, a bit of the wording, you know, with a shock effect. And now it has like maximum shock effect so the base shock effect um, is 50 percent there are other ascendancies like elementalist i think can get up to 100 percent and there is an atlas passive that gets your know, maximum shock and that can be 60 percent um but now they they add like maximum shock effect uh, i think they changed the mastery to 15 so now you can technically get a 65 percent um shock out of it um if you um have the lightning mastery so overall a shock buff i think this comes hand in hand with the new skills that are based on the shock and shock effect right then we have a pretty hefty nerf on the brittle um this now gives you six percent base crit on max tag instead of 15 percent so with secrets of suffering um that was like so strong and superior to the normal ailments because if you think about you have brittle sap and um scorch right scorch along the the elder race sap is is um making the enemy deal less damage to you and brittle gives you base crit compared to ignite freeze and shock if you're an ignite build you don't care about frost uh, like shock or chill or anything so you only use one but with secrets of suffering with brittle sap and scorch these all three benefit your character right so now i'm um, having this line change to a base crit of six percent it's still very strong it's a base crit and not increased crit right but you know with brittle it was fairly easy to get a hundred percent critical strike chance for all these like lightning strike uh berserks and whatnot so they probably have to add some more base crit now to actually reach that then we have the reservation efficiency the mana reservation efficiency mastery got removed um in terms of like 15 percent reduced mana reservation efficiency as well as the life one and the effect of Aura's note got, uh, got nerfed from 15% Aura effect to 10%. So, yeah, there's still going to be other ways um, of getting your Aura's going. But maybe for some builds, that was like the, the point where you could like not gain an extra Aura anymore, right? But keep in mind that some of the Aura's, um, I think it was like Wrath or something, they have an alternate quality for reduced mana reservation. Um, so maybe keep that in mind. Then he changed the flask charges um, um, where it says like you know, when you get hit you restore seven flask charges from four six and seven to one two and three i don't know how impactful that is for those builds that like fake blood builds or whatever they were called um or if it's still like if it's enough or not i i don't know it seems like when i watch these videos they have like permanent flask like as soon as they get hit they're instantly full so i don't know if this is like a tremendous impact here then we have the non aura skills cost no mana or life while focused valid modifier um, got removed. And also the benchcraft got removed. They changed Chainbreaker from um, being affected by mana regeneration rate to now be mana regeneration flat, you know? So I think if you go Chainbreaker with like clarity and some aura effect, you could probably gain like a lot more rage per second 
uh, than you used to be with the alternative where you're just stacking mana regeneration rate. So it goes from the flat value. So I'm curious, I've seen a video of somebody doing the math and he said like, if you have like high amounts of mana regen, you get like eight, nine rage per second with a new formula, you should be able to get like 12, 13 rage per second. So it's, it's pretty much uh, a big buff over there. So maybe some chain breaker action, rage vortex for the next league. Then we have damage taken recouped as life can now um, roll on Crimson Viridian and Cobalt Jewels. Then we have the um, passive skill tree changes to lightning damage. There is a new um, great crit multi lightning cluster where Arcing Blows was, I think, and Arcing Blows got moved to the trickster side above Vile Toxing, as far as I rem uh, remember. Then there is a Shock Spread Mastery with 10 um, as the new mastery because they removed another one. Um, Element Duration while focused mod um have half of the values now then we have avoid being stunned flask modifiers got buffed so there is like the, the flask craft um from the veiled i think it was cinder swallow where you got like a 50 percent flat right but the t1 is now a bit more like 55 to 60 percent or something not really too impactful because you need other sources or with a mage blood it doesn't matter either way right then we have reduced trap duration change sources of reduced trap durations that grant other stats avoiding the sunblast abuse because of making them slightly more powerful for other builds this is actually quite funny because like literally today in the morning or something i i saw a video of like a trapper and that said like yo sunblast is is insane and so much damage and holy shit and now when i reviewed the patch notes i see like something like sunblast abuse mm -hmm. so quickly counter reacted to that the molt, uh, Molten Shell buff effect, Helm Enchant is gone, and adrenaline, uh, adrenaline can now inertly cannot be gained while you already have Adrenaline, so you have to probably lose it to reapply it, which kind of sucks, because, you know, it, it feels better if you have a flask, and it, when it's like two seconds left, you just reapply it, and then you have the full duration again, right? It's always bad if you have to lose something in order to reapply it. Then we have Atlas changes. The following maps have been added. Ancient City, Arachnid Nest, Arachnid Town, Belfry, Castle Ruins, Chateau Map, Colosseum, Krata, uh, Defiled Cathedral, Dig, Excavation, Forking River, Ghetto, Leyline, Pan, Phantasmagoria, Pier Plateau, Racecourse, Shrine Seal, Stagnation, Sulphur Vents, Vault, and Waterways Map. All of these are like decent or nah. But now maps removed. We have Basilica, Bazaar, Beach removed, burial chamber removed, city square removed. Then we have um, fields, glacier. We have uh, what else map is good? I think tower map removed, toxic you are removed, tropical island removed. Like there is, oh man, dude, that kind of sucks. I mean, like okay, we still have the um, crimson temple map, right? So imagine they remove that one as well. So. I think with adding the Magebot card to the Crimson Temple, it overtake the Barrel Chamber, Doctor Card Farm, and as long as we have that, I mean, why would you not farm that in a normal mapping scenario? Because you have always a chance to drop one of these cards, and they're gonna be massive in terms of um, currency income. And then you have the the Akira League modifiers: Fortune favors the Brave, Essence Abyss, Ambush Heist, Legion Blight and expedition i think legion might be very very good this league just like with the atlas passive there is um legion farming strategies and i think like if you have a decent build you know val arc or something maybe some ignite essence during contagion if you can do that in a quite good way then this is where the currency is going to be i guess so good that is the quick rundown of the patch notes um i try to make it as fast as possible and um, so if you're not willing to spend like uh, three hours reading through the entire thing um, then hope this one helps and I want to quit the video as of here and I'm going to keep you guys updated in the cup upcoming days about maybe new changes new uniques maybe my leak starter my potential leak starter um, and then we're going to start this entire project again with like you know the my my leak star diary the, the weird ass build that I that I'm thinking about to leak start with uh, and all these kind of things. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.